everyone. Welcome to FPGA stand-up meeting for Open Research Institute for uh, April 11th of 2023. What we do here is we talk about what we've done over the past week, what we're going to do over the next week, and if we need any resources for our work, and uh, if we have any roadblocks. And we have plenty to share uh, because our class with MathWorks for HDL Coder and uh, and FPGA work with respect to software defined radio is now live. And it looks like we're well on our way to being able to have um, a successful class. Okay, so let's do, a, let's do our round table. Uh, James, you wanna start off? I can start us off. Thank Hello, you. Hello everyone, I'm James Keel, Juliet 7 Keel Delta Echo. I'm a lab technician at Remote Lab South for ORI. Uh, not too much to report in. We've been organizing some of our boxes and some of our equipment to get things more properly set up. Other than that, there's not too much to report this past week, but we're otherwise doing well. Okay, thank you. Good to know. Um, the area was hit by a series of tornadoes, so that's uh, all good news. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, go ahead, Paul. I think you have some things to share. Hello, I'm Paul, KB5MU. At Remote Lab West, we have a new radio installed. The uh, ADRV 9002 is physically installed. It's I made up aluminum plate screwed down the the FPGA platform to it and the radio. So they're mechanically stable now. Not yet been turned on. Uh, we need to do some more work to figure out exactly what's necessary to to convert the, the software over to work with this platform. So that's coming soon. Uh, done some work in... Um, I can help a little bit there because the 7 a.m. meeting with Leonard, we um, we talked about this exact issue. So Leonard is going to look at the pinouts between the ZCU-106 and the ADRV-9002 to make absolutely sure that there isn't any incompatibility. Because as we've discussed before, the ZCU-102, the first board in this particular family that we have, we have the the one of the more advanced ones, uh, that the ZCU-102 is supported explicitly by analog devices and the 106 is not but there's an awful lot of people using our combination since it's the most uh, capable uh, sets of boards in the family uh, so so Leonard is gonna look at the schematics for me and tell and then come back to me and tell me if, that it's okay uh, and then my job is to is to make sure to go to go ahead and and check out the rest of it in terms of technical files to get this up and running in the lab, like like all of the other teams out there in the world have been able to do. Um, so, I just, I just wanted to interject to say that we're we're working on this, and and we had a, a meeting earlier uh, expressly devoted to this particular issue. Very good. Thanks for the work on that. Uh... I looked briefly at the engineer zone that analog devices run their forum for, for supporting this stuff and didn't find anything in the way of super explicit instructions on how to do that. So somebody already knows what's going on between the two of you to be able to figure it out and they'll be able to turn it on and make it available to everybody. There's also been some work on opulent voice, but nothing uh, directly FPGA related. Come got past uh a roadblock on that thanks to a lot of uh, very important help from michelle uh, we're now able to actually detect the sync words reliably because there were some there was a filter that needed adjusting that i wasn't aware of didn't know how to adjust and now we now we do know and we've adjusted it uh, so adding s some more of the protocol layers in there to be able to push voice through again as we did before uh, but now with the proper protocols will be the next thing on the agenda. And then back to trying to transmit it with a Raspberry Pi and uh, less extra hardware. Um, I think that may be all I have to report. All right. Thank you. And work continues on the uplink. Uh, we made some big steps forward that are in the repo already. So if you're on Slack and you can see all the GitHub Ops uh, updates, then you can look at the check-ins and and review the work uh so so thank you very much uh paul from from remote labs west uh things are things are working pretty well all right uh so go ahead sasha uh do you have any anything you need or any reports, any reports to, make? to make uh no honestly life has been very very busy for me so 
I don't have much to report. I did sign up for the class, so I'm actually very much looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah, our class has come together. Uh, all of the negotiations and work with MathWorks has paid off. We've got a class that focuses on digital communications and software-defined radio and getting the most out of Xilinx and analog devices chips uh, with a workflow that both of these companies prioritize. And the goal here is to produce good, solid open source work. Um, and that happens with the particular toolbox that we're going to use in the class. Um, so the class will be held from uh, the 1st through the 5th of May uh, 2023 and will be online. And there are subsidies available for people that cannot afford the, the price of the class. Um, we are super happy about this. Uh, so I'll put the links in the show notes for this particular uh, recording so you can get to it. Uh, we're hoping that it that will, by the time you see this, we probably will have filled it up. But if it goes well and the response is strong, then we'll do it again and take all the feedback that we hopefully will get from the participants and make it even better. Um, other things going on here this week are that our newsletter for April is now out. Uh, send it out to the mailing list and or to the list for the newsletter to also to our mailing list uh, for ORI. The links will be posted on our Slack and all throughout social media. I've taken a tour through um, a variety of technical Discord servers and posted the content. Uh, so there's two things. The class from MathWorks, uh, we're where we get some training that we've been after for a while and has been delayed by COVID is going to happen and will help us with the things that we want to do with uh, difficult digital communications um, systems. And also the guest editor for our newsletter is Dr. Daniel Estefes. And if you're, if you're not familiar with his work, then his blog is an amazing resource. Uh, so a, a strong open source proponent and he's uh, been been very generous with his time and has written a, a detailed walkthrough of how he used the open source tool Amaranth. This is a, a sort of a, a Python centric framework that lets you take code from Python into HDL. Uh, and he explains how he used it uh, to create the Maya SDR. Maya SDR is a spectrum analyzer that runs entirely within the FPGA on a Pluto SDR for analog devices. The Pluto SDR, uh, the central sort of a, a chip there, uh, is the 9361 from analog devices. And the FPGA on there, I believe, is this 7010 or 7020. Uh, so this is a really cool article. It's uh, it's in our newsletter, and I'll, I'll, the link will also be in the, the show notes for this particular recording. So there, there's lots of things going on uh, with FPGAs. So if you're kind of wondering why we would have a class about HDL Coder, a proprietary toolbox from MathWorks, and also publish a, a substantial article about Amaranth, um, I'll explain. What we're after is to know how this work is done, both in the proprietary and commercial world and in open source so that we can better inform open source tools about what they're up against, about what their competition is. And uh, furthermore, whatever the right tool for the job is, that's what we use because the focus of our work is the outcome, the published work. So whatever tool is best for the job, that's what we need to use because the end goal is to produce solid open source work that is useful in a broad variety of platforms. And HDL Coder from, from MATLAB or MathWorks produces vendor independent code, human readable, it's high quality. And I suspect that the open source community can also achieve this goal. And if you read the article from Dr. Estefes, I can you can see what Amaranth in particular will provide you. So that's our goal as a nonprofit uh, organization is to do this sort of R&D in these sorts of fair uh, comparisons and, and be unblinking about it and to just go ahead and do the work and to get our hands dirty, to be able to make 
legitimate and authentic comparisons. Uh, okay, so plenty more about the class. Uh, it's useful because it has two solid days of very wonderful theory. Uh, so you'll learn about cordic, you'll learn about multi-phase, uh, polyphase filters and polyphase techniques and all sorts of things. The trickery is in the math, fixed point versus floating point, all sorts of stuff about specific to software defined radio. And then the, the last two days of the class are actually implementing a transceiver on a 9361 from analog devices. This is a remote class. So if you can handle the time zone, which is US Pacific, then you can take it and you can take it heavily subsidized. I don't think there's ever been a situation where a MathWorks class like this has ever been offered for $100 but we are. And as soon as it fills up, then we'll move forward. And if you uh, go ahead and say that you're interested, then maybe we'll do this again and, and subsidize the classes for people in the open source community. So we are devoted towards this and this is what we're here for. Um, very, very much looking forward to taking the class and to, to being able to help people get, get ready for it. Uh, if you need a refresher course in MATLAB or Simulink, just the mechanics of MATLAB or Simulink, then there's a ton of free and really good resources from, from MATLAB. We've put them into the registration form so that you can get to them. Um, and if you're if you're short on the DSP side, uh, digital signal processing side, if you if you need to kind of get up to speed on that, then get in touch and we'll see what we can do. Because uh, we have about a month and there's a lot that can happen if you if you want to close the gap. So thank you to everyone that's made this possible. We hope to keep doing this uh, in the future. And we're we're looking for anyone that wants to help defray the costs. Uh, we are we're gonna be I think it's fair to say that we'll be doing this at a loss, but it's worth it. And we already have some some contributions, some donations that will uh, put it back more towards uh, you know even even money. Uh, but if this is the sort of thing that you want to see in amateur radio and an open source community, and all of these things will definitely help uh, all of the different companies out there that are that are trying to do this work, uh, having having a, a more vibrant and healthy open source code base in advanced digital communications actually does help uh, all sorts of efforts, including including commercial ones. A rising tide lifts all boats. So if you can pay it, pay it back or invest in this, then we're we're willing to to listen to you and to to do what we can to meet any needs that we don't see. So that's it from my end. I think uh, the floor goes to Mike. Yeah, I'm just uh, listening as as always. I have nothing to contribute today. Hopefully, you got my um, email about uh, Casper. Yes, I did. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks, everybody. We have lots more going on with a variety of different projects. Um, and I think we'll we'll go ahead and shut down the, the FPGA and remote labs part and we'll move into office hours. If you're if you're listening to this and you would like to learn more about what we do, uh, then please go to openresearch.institute, click on getting started and get in touch and we'll be happy to help meet you wherever you're at and to see you uh, achieve your goals.